present uh, highly on is is trading uh, in line with where the small cap market is trading, especially the micro cap market. It is uh, uh, safe to say that we are in a different time uh, than we were in the back half of the last decade, which saw um, exuberant valuations across the board in large capitalization markets, as well as speculative markets. And you could throw really anything to the stock market and make money. Um, we're not in that environment. And I think the stock market now post pandemic is actually feeling out those specific opportunities. One in particular that I've talked about, these are uh, one of the top two conviction uh, buys right now uh, in the stock market, uh, highly on holdings, uh, is the focus of this particular video. Um, we will go for 30 minutes on this. We will cut it a little bit short. We are in for the um, calm before the storm here as we are right smack immersed in the middle of not only a short selling frenzy, which will uh, subside uh, at some point, the attack is is rampant and um, not to be assisted by um, what has been a fairly quiet period for Hylion in way of orders. Um, they are looking to focus on solidifying uh, that 210 order book that they've got <clears throat> and make sure that the products that are delivered on that front uh, really evade some of the problems that have plagued both Tesla and Nikola news just this week. Nikola recalled all their BEV vehicles, which the stock should have dropped 50%. Um, that's what should have happened. Uh, it's a fickle market when you look at what happens in way of stock uh, action from day to day. My friends, I wouldn't gauge um, your investing thesis based on the stock action day to day. Um, and I would suggest that right now with this current st stock price, and what we know about the companies going on, I wouldn't play, pay too much material attention or pay too much credence or give too much value right now on where things are. The entire micro market is uh, recessed um, and it's uh, highly on is, is caught up in that. Um, there are um, really a frenzied um, swarm of of people looking to make money in any capacity it appears as if long uh, investing is dead on arrival we are at record lows for people who are in the market and these are typically the times where the market actually turns and proves everybody wrong um, those looking for strategic opportunities will get burned to the upside and long investors will be paid back for doing the very simple time in the market as opposed to trying to time the market. Now, if I'm going to be guilty of timing the market right now in April of 2023, uh, it will be um, safe to say that I'm continuing to fund markets on a dollar cost average schedule. And by doing so, I buy the dips and volatility in the market and I sleep easy doing so. It's not a, a huge risk. There's something I want to talk about within the investor community, and that has to do with scale. Okay, there's a lot of people out there that have invested in highly on. They follow uh, both my message and uh, a, a few others on YouTube that are providing some fantastic content out there, really trying to fortify the the positive outreach on the forward reaching side of the house where Hylion is focused on other initiatives right now um we would safely suggest that it's OEM integration it is finalizing certification and it is extrapolating the data achieved from last year's summer and now into this last winter's winter validation and testing which we understand on the last quarterly call to be extremely valuable to the company. There were some improvements made and you don't subject your product to that type of rigor without some sort of learning that comes out of it. Um, the expanded fleet trials, guys, is next on the checklist here. And it's going to be amazing to see the Hylion product and see if this extra time that's been spent in uh, really uh, fortifying this product, the ERX product is was was time well spent. Uh, it may have been at the expense of shareholder patience. It may have been uh, at the expense of of shareholder value. <clears throat> but I think something to keep in mind is that additional time that is being scrutinized so heavily now may actually pay off 
exponentially into the future. And that's the portion of the highly on opportunity that I, I don't think people see. I don't, I don't think people truly understand that if they're dragging their feet or they're, they've grown, grown complacent in their applications, none of which I think is true. I think Hylian has demonstrated that they want to go through the due diligence that is necessary. And we forget relationships that they've made along the line with industry, with OEM, and specifically with FEV. I think people forget the monumental uh, piece that they played in bringing Hylion's technology to bear here and, and getting it to the stage that we're in right now in uh, really staring down that potential for uh, commercialization, uh, expanded fleet trials and rollouts, and then to get some of those respective fleet-specific orders on the docket for going into 2024. I just think we're in that, that cooling period right now. I've called it the ice age, and that's just where we are. Um, I've been right in my assessment. In the meantime, the players will play games in the stock market. There's no doubt about it. For those people who think they know where the stock is going, lower or higher, I, it's a futile effort at this point. I've had some fun and 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 played my thesis. You would have been right for the last you know, 24 months to suggest that the stock would do nothing but go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that... You know where the stock ran up on its initial spat craze it has done the complete reciprocation of that stock action and i've said many times what's going on in this market yes for a lot of the untrained is humbling i understand that but stock market investing needs to be kept in a box and especially you folks out there i want to talk about your highly on shares and scale a lot of you guys have smaller positions and you're losing your shorts, okay? Some of the contributing factors to losing your shorts right now are due to inexperience, over-leveraging, and misinterpreting the opportunity. Okay, those three things in some capacity, large or small in each of those categories, is probably sending you on an emotional roller coaster, all right? But when I talk about scale, the magnitude that can be exacerbated by the amount of scale that you have in this particular offering can really be put into perspective when you look at the fact, look, if you're a 500 share owner and you're losing your shorts over this thing, where you can find value in my counsel is an understanding the opportunity to the upside here, understanding that if you're satisfied with your position or you think you're over the lever a, a little bit, stop adding to the position okay i i think there are is, is real value in either one of those two methods okay but where you have the third option of just selling out of the stock i, I think that sometimes is the most alluring for people now when they look at it and they're like okay i've got a 500 share position i can salvage the dollars that are left in the company all of the same um, undisciplined, untrained deliberations that we go through in looking at a stock position and not realizing that the stock itself is what we're after. Right now, we're not expecting price appreciation based on what we've known the market to deliver for Hylion. And I just jotted down a few things that, and amongst many, many others, okay, when we start to get into the specifics of the ERX, we start to identify that if these guys can do what it is they're projecting that they can do, there's been a few tests to uh, lead us to believe that this Hypertruck ERX can actually go for those extended distance and meet a huge pain point in the industry. I'm quoting the CEO from Agility in, in providing a product that is scary good in its, in its specifics and its specifications. OK, but the stock market currently is providing zero value to the business side of Hylion. OK, right now, Hylion stock price is pricing about a $250 million company. They're sitting on about $350 to $400 million of cash, depending on how those short and medium term investments that they've got to augment their cash position are performing. But but let's just call it $350 million in cash right now. The stock market is devaluing the input and relationships and collaborations that's already been garnered and proved out for investors in the company through FEV. 
FEV played a critical role in bringing the technology to bear, working through some of the kinks, consolidating the shipping and packaging surrounding the hybrid unit at the time when the first iteration of the hybrid came out. Remember, that whole product changed from the original hybrid to the EX1, okay? And FEV played a phenomenal role in that. I suspect that FEV will also play a critical role from a behind-the-scenes perspective in ensuring that the engineering and the specifications behind the technology can actually be put to the rigor and expected to be performing up to par in the service that we expect it to deliver on. The OEMs, the current stock market is pricing Hylion at zero, as if they might have a relationship with Peterbilt uh, and Freightliner, Packout, Packar, but there will be nothing materialized from it. Nothing. Stock market currently right now is pricing Hylion as a go out of business. All right. Now, if your investing thesis is in agreement with the current posture on Hylion and you suspect that the company is going out of business, then just invest accordingly. Okay. Uh, I don't invest in the company presuming that all of these things are just going to dissolve away. Orders, orders are going to stop. If nothing else over the last three years, listen, as choppy as it's been with the order book and the solidification of the queue and splitting the definition between orders and reservations, it has grown in the last three years. Okay. Now you can argue that it hasn't grown quick enough, or you know, you would have liked to have seen it grow faster, or you would have liked to have seen it grow in accordance with what their projections would um, suggest that they could grow at. You could even suggest that they lied on those projections, which I have made that conjecture many, many times. None of that really matters. It's their job to be presumptuous, okay? If you put undue reliance on those statistics, which I felt were mis misleading, I've been very, very clear on this point, then so be it. It's all fair in love and war in the investing game, okay? As long as everything is properly disclaimed, there is no case right now based on, you know, feeling hurt in the stock market or looking at the current juncture and wanting to blame highly on right now for, for where we are, a recessed stock price going into the middle or back half of 2023 and not really understanding where we are with the current stock market. It feels like we are on shaky ground. Um, everybody, when the market goes down one day, are talking about, the recession is inevitable. I, I'm not in that camp. We will see, and we will evaluate whether or not we've entered into and come out of a recession. Typically, you do that process without even knowing it. So so calling or, or even worse, trying to invest around the prospects of a recession is just a futile game that you will lose. You will lose. And I've said many, many times for share owners in the company to either hold, buy and hold the company, or don't own it at all. OK, those two extremes are the only way that you can make it. Make it, don't invest. Company goes out of business, you win. Invest in the company, highly on materializes on some of the relationships we know exist, unless they're completely lying about everything, which I don't operate along that presumption. The world needs this solution. OK, I do believe that Thomas Healy has been hard to work on this project for the better part of the last seven or eight years. I do believe that the relationships with PACAR and Dana and some of the many other players and the evolution of integrating and augmenting and really um, asking industry, uh, soliciting for industry input on this product has brought us to where we are now, okay? But the hybrid unit is being priced at zero. The Carno generator is being priced at zero, the customer growth, right, is being priced as if customer growth will stall out and cease to exist. See, I find that funny if we were going to look at a trajectory of customer growth over the last three years in public markets, I have to suggest that cu customer growth, customer engagement, customer awareness in all different platforms, some more uh, strategically placed than others, some probably more successful than others, um, is going to Davos in the company's best interest. Well, I don't know. It's better to go and then weigh that uh, impact after the ACT Expo. 
is that in Hylion's best interest to, you know, place themselves right next to Peterbilt? the very OEM that they have projected to have relationship with and is going to be their go-to-market strategy uh, in just a few short months. The, the stock market is pricing the stock as if it's not going to follow through on that relationship with Peterbilt. I beg to differ. So at this particular juncture, when I talk about the disconnect, there was no bottom end on the disconnect that I offered through the channel to somehow explain where we could go on either end of the extremes. It's impossible to forecast that. There are factors at play right now that are going into this, okay? As soon as Hylion wants to move on this thing, I think some momentum will be built up and I think we'll see a pop in the stock. I will be on board for that inevitable inevitable day, my friends. Whether or not we see 50 cents or some people are calling for one cent, Fine. You can call for whatever you want. Okay. Call for 2.2 cents. I, I, it just, it's a material, it's irrelevant. And at this particular point with the grander uh, global situation and grander economic situation globally, and people kind of feeling like we're on sketchy ground right now, be interesting to see what tech earnings bring next week. I've talked about this. Maybe it breeds a little bit of life into the stock market where I, I've i monitored it for the last couple of years, if not the last three years, and it's been pretty horrendous. So this type of speculative investing at a time like this is going to require very, very simple application of patience. That's what it's going to take. All right. Selling out now, boy, oh boy, that's one of three options that I think is off the table now, okay? Look, come talk to me, ask me when the stock hits $25, say, Ryan, I want to parlay some money for my kid's education. Great. That's the type of opportunity we need to look at. But chopping the shares now is, is, is really probably a far cry from the top two options, which the easiest of all options is just to hold true. If you don't want to average down and you feel like the stock in its slippery slope is going to 50 cents or whatever it is, so be it. I've waited these opportunities out. I've seen them go down before, okay? In hindsight, I would have loved to have just sat on cash here and waited for the, the company if I was going to forecast where the company has gone and the company's inability to try to fight what has been a slippery slope and an, an obvious punishment of share owners, really. It, it just, uh, it's amazing to me how the company has chosen this strategic time frame to go absolutely silent on the line. I mean, absolutely silent. Thomas Healy had a, a video come out this week, which was quite good, but it, it takes weeks and weeks in preparation to polish this amazing product that they put out for two or three minutes of, of, of a video that they drop through Twitter and they drop through their Hylion, I, there's other strategic ways and they need to get more creative with their outreach and they have cho chosen not to do that. So could the stock go down to 50 based on their lack of acknowledgement to the stock, to the share price? Absolutely, it could, absolutely. And I'll continue to sit on the sideline here and pick up strategic shares in these recessed uh, valuations, which I think anything south of $3 is, is an absolute steal. If you picked up shares at 250, if you're picking up shares at 150 or below, if you're waiting for the stock to get below one, no problem. I will be there buying the stock. It's it's just that simple. I want to accumulate shares in this company because I believe in the product and nothing has changed. All right. We had Freeman Jones actually release a video and he talked about this, this very thing. What has changed with the company? All right. Is it the same company at $58 as it is here at $1.50? I would suggest that it's better now at $1.50 than it was at $58. We know so much more now at $1.50 than we did at $58. We're out of that, you know, minutia, if not still kind of stuck in the mud a little bit from the egg on the face mentality that anything that was coming out of the SPAC era deserves to dissolve away and go away. They shouldn't have been allowed to come to public markets in the first place. It's Hylion's job to prove them wrong in that they were close enough to commercialization and the SPAC funding that did come through helped accelerate their technology to the mainstream, right? This is a prove it story. 
Do I think it's going to unfold that way? Well, with the relationships and the few positive catalysts that I earmark over the next, let's say, coming couple of years, have a real chance of materializing. What are we going to be evaluating with the FEV relationship? What are we going to be identifying with their relationship with, with PACAR? Will there be other OEMs? Will they have integrated the Freightliner line as well as the Peterbilt line? Will there be other uh, strategic rollouts with other OEMs? We have heard nothing on this front, absolutely nothing. But in two years' time, will the story be, just as the stock market will suggest it to be now, in that that story will continue to be dormant? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm betting on the fact that they have penetrated the market enough to get their name out there enough with a phenomenal product, yes. But I do think that there's a lot of work in discovery with Hylion and integrating with industry and making sure that... Fleets have a chance to get this product in their hands and utilize the product and determine for the, themselves whether or not it is an alternative to diesel, what type of TCOs they drive, whether or not it, the benefit is worth it. And if they're experiencing not only the TCO benefit, but also the benefit on the political front with regard to what we all know needs to happen, and it needs to happen now and that is to reduce the pollution from the Class 8 trucking industry, Hylion is the solution. And if I was going to summarize my bullish thesis and give you an elevator pitch on that, that is exactly what we're investing in. We are investing in a solution that is top tier. You can say that they're top three if that's what you want. You could say that they're top five. You can say that they're top 10. But in a $1 trillion industry, to be priced at zero Right now, Hylion has given zero credit for their business, absolutely zero. I'll say it again. It is priced at zero. So when we talk about scale, we talk about the number of shares that you have. Keep it in perspective with regard to your opportunity long-term. And that's what we're going to mention now. The opportunity going forward is super, super difficult to see when we're going through a very, very difficult time, if not the most difficult time with the stock. That's why it's incumbent upon a strong community to stay together. People have thrown tomatoes at me. They, they, they think that somehow I'm a bad guy because I give a quick look. I don't like to see the stock recess just as much as the next guy, okay? I don't. I'm not going to come on and tell you that it's all roses right now and that absolutely, with 100% certainty, this thing is going to absolutely pay dividends into the future, all right? I'm not going to do that. It's immaterial to, to talk about that. All we need to do is get a little bit of firm footing of predictable metrics with this company and get this thing up to five, six dollars. And I think that's the first first uh, stage. When I talk about people starting investing, I don't tell them to become a millionaire overnight. I tell them to get their first five hundred dollars put away, right? Investing in a company like this requires a level of risk tolerance that is outside of most people's capability, really is. So you need to ask yourself whether or not you uh, enjoy engaging in this opportunity to own the shares and not lose track of the very opportunity that we're talking about, okay? The stock price is immaterial, okay? I, I've, I've touched on this a little bit. This will really help solidify people's understanding of we are going to be in a situation, let's just say six months removed of now, Okay, let's just say around Thanksgiving time, are we going to be giving thanks or are we going to be counting the stars, <laughs> you know, but one thing we have in common is that each and every one of us will be here. Okay, we'll be here six months from now, we'll be deliberating and we'll be reflecting on the ice age. We will be suggesting that perhaps maybe we've encountered a couple of those catalysts, maybe not at all, maybe not at all. What I am asking you to do, my friends, and this is a strategy that I have not deployed yet on Hylion, and that's to forget the stock price. Just forget it. Give it six months. Give it six months with the idea that Hylion needs time to encounter, to, 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 not, to pursue, right? And to share those catalysts and the renderings from those catalysts over the next six months. As we approach the delivery of the units to the fleets, 
um, the strategic deployment of the uh, Hypertruck ERX, the potential for coming into whatever Hylion is determining to be a commercial step up from where they are right now, which is quite frankly, a pilot period. This is a pilot period. Okay. Um, so the stock is being priced as a pilot period. They're not going to go into mass. Com they're not a commercial company right now, right? Could be a very simple explanation as to why the stock is trading where it's, where it's trading. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Okay. Now, if this bothers you, what I would suggest that you do is buy into what in my best depths of knowledge to provide to you. My best assessment on how to handle a situation like this is to do one of two things, not the third, okay, but one of two things, and that's to hold or buy more, okay? Now, as we buy more, it should be very apparent to you that you're buying those shares at an extremely discounted price, okay? So going forward, if you wanted to continue to monitor the stock, give yourself this opportunity for an emotional break, Okay, look at the back half of this year as maybe being that potential time where we are in a little bit more conducive markets. Maybe we'll, the the small caps, which traditionally lead us out of recessions, will be that leadership group where value is being recessed right now, and the recession of the value, albeit in the in the short term, is tough to incur, has the potential to just melt your face off. When it turns the other direction, I've seen this many, many times. The shift of capital is very, very powerful from different sectors and different, you know, groupings and different leadership in the markets. Leadership does not remain leadership forever. And while small cap stocks have really lagged the market for quite a long time um, and are at historically low valuations now, position yourself. Now, while nobody's talking about it, where guys like myself are very elegantly talking about the prospects of at least sitting and holding your investment, as opposed to maybe doing what I'm doing. And I'll share with you guys every addition that I make, okay? And that is to add, add to the stock. So at present right now, guys, I mean, we are in just about as bad of a, of a phase if the stock continues to digress Think about it this way. You always look at stocks and you look at the charts and you look at when it actually, you know, plunged down to its low and then started on its upward trajectory. You always wonder about that low. And it's like, who who is actually buying right now at that low? You know, who actually had the 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 confidence and the and the um the courage to buy that low? This has the most potential of, of of offering that time over the next two or three months. So I would say, and charge the group with going to work, go to work and look to strategically add blocks of shares as the stock digresses. It's like catching a falling egg, okay? Uh, and add to your position and look to lower that cost average because um, now I think we are sitting on a stock where the disconnect is being provided by the short sellers and it's no problem. Um, I will be the um, uh, patron of entertainment when I get to watch those uh, uh, those shorts fry on the way up. It'll be fine with me. I'll be calm. I don't get emotional about the stuff. Um, I'm just as uh, well uh, uh, encouraged uh, by the company's progress thus far in the face of what has been a tumultuous ride uh, in way of the stock. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the weekly highly on update. Uh, stay tuned for continued weekly uh, updates on the opportunity with Highly on Holdings. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. And thank you so much for your time in covering Highly on Holdings.